The top stories tonight in, in Y News. The Philippine government has lifted the entry ban for travelers from territories under red list or areas with high COVID-19 risk. Metro Manila remains under alert level 3 until end of January amid rising COVID-19 cases. The Department of Health is developing a system for people who have used antigen tests to log in and input their results even while at home. The Department of Transportation will deploy mystery passengers in public utility vehicles to monitor and ensure PUV drivers' compliance with the no-vaccination, no-ride policy in Metro Manila starting on Monday. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Today is Friday, January 14, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am Kat Maraos. First in the news. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, or IATF, has allowed the entry of international travelers from countries, jurisdictions, and territories considered as high risk for COVID-19. Meanwhile, the IATF also amends the arrival protocols for international passengers. Rosa Licos will tell us why. The Philippines has lifted the ban on entry of passengers from red list countries, jurisdictions and territories or those areas with high risk of COVID-19 infection from January 16 to 31, 2021. Filipinos from these territories will now be allowed to enter the Philippines subject to quarantine without the need for a repatriation flight. Pinapayagan na po ang inbound international travel ng lahat ng sa red list within the last 14 days prior to arrival to any port in the Philippines. Territories under the red list are Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba, Canada, Curaçao, French Guiana, Iceland, Malta, Mayotte, Mozambique, Puerto Rico, USA, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Spain, and U.S. Virgin Islands. All travelers from red, green, or yellow list areas are required to present a negative result from an RT-PCR test taken 48 hours before their departure from country of origin. Fully vaccinated travelers from red lists are required to undergo facility-based quarantine and take another RT-PCR test on the seventh day. They can be discharged once they get the negative result and complete their home quarantine on the 14th day from date of arrival. But for partially vaccinated, unvaccinated, or those whose vaccination status cannot be validated, they have to stay in quarantine until the 10th day and observe home quarantine until the 14th day. The Pandemic Task Force also amended the arrival protocols for those arriving from green and yellow list. Under the green list are 32 countries, territories, and jurisdictions including China, India, Indonesia, Japan, and others. Fully vaccinated foreign travelers from green list no longer have to undergo mandatory facility-based quarantine but will have to self-monitor for symptoms for seven days. For the unvaccinated, partially vaccinated, or those whose inoculation cannot be validated must go on facility quarantine until they get the result of an RT-PCR are tests taken on the fifth day. They are required to self-monitor for symptoms until the 14th day. For fully vaccinated from yellow territories, they are required to undergo facility-based quarantine and take RT-PCR test on the fifth day. Once they get a negative result, they can be released for completion of home quarantine up to the seventh day. For unvaccinated, partially vaccinated, or those whose vaccination status cannot be verified, they will undergo facility-based quarantine and RT-PCR test on the seventh day. After getting their negative result, they can be discharged for home quarantine up to the 14th day. 
Meanwhile, starting February 16, 2022, all foreign nationals are required to present proof of full vaccination before entry to the Philippines. However, children below 18 years old, people medically unable to receive the vaccine, as well as foreign diplomats and their qualified dependents are exempted from the requirement. The palace reiterates all international tourists are still now allowed to enter the country. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Metro Manila and several other areas will still be under COVID-19 alert level 3 until January 31, 2022, according to Malacanang. This as coronavirus infections continue to soar in the country. Apart from the National Capital Region, 54 other areas are in the same COVID-19 restrictions. The Department of Health said there is a rapid increase of infections in these areas as well. Meron na ho tayong mga ibang areas that we have escalated to alert level 3 dahil tumataas po ang mga kaso sa kanilang lugar. And similar to the trends when NCR started to have this increase in cases, ganun din po yung nangyayari sa kanila. Meron pong doubling time na mabilis at yun pong pagtaas talaga ay biglaan. The government earlier announced 28 areas under alert level 3 starting today until the end of the month. Meanwhile, 22 provinces are under alert level 2 from January 16 to 31, 2022. The Philippine National Police is working on adding more isolation facilities for cops stricken by COVID-19. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. Due to the continuous rising number of PNP personnel infected with COVID-19, Philippine National Police Deputy Chief for Administration and Administrative Support for COVID-19 Operation Task Force Commander, Police Lieutenant General Joselito Veracruz admits that their isolation and quarantine facilities in Camp Crame has exceeded to 100%. General Veracruz said they have nine isolation and quarantine facilities in Camp Crame, but as of now, 573 or 102.32% were admitted. It consists of 468 PNP personnel, 74 non-uniform personnel, and 17 civilians. Veracruz said they can no longer accommodate more patients in the coming days. They will just send them to the quarantine facilities in NCRPO. Pro 3 and Pro 4A. Veracruz also said they are in close coordination with the local government units to know if they can accommodate infected police personnel in their quarantine facilities. The PNP is also waiting for the formal guidelines from the Department of Health on the implementation of short isolation period for fully vaccinated individuals as it will help the congest their quarantine facilities. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippines recorded 37,207 new cases of novel coronavirus disease or COVID-19, the highest single-day tally so far. The figure beat the previous record of 34,021 infections logged the previous day, January 13. Friday's cases brought the total case count to 3,129,512, wherein 8.5% or 265,509 remain active or patients undergoing treatment. Of the active cases, 8,325 have no symptoms, 252,502 are mild, 2,913 are in moderate condition, 1,469 are severe, and 300 are critical. There were also 81 new deaths and 9,027 recoveries logged today. The recovery tally went up to 2,811,188, while the death toll stood at 52,815. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has topped to 320,185,308, while the deaths have surged to 5,521,138, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 64,082,824 
and 846,488 respectively, according to the CSSE. In terms of infections, India follows in the second place with 36,317,927 cases and 485,131 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes second with 620,830 fatalities. The Department of Health, or DOH, is currently setting up a mechanism in order to include the antigen test positive results to the official case tally. The DOH also reminds the public there is a proper way to use antigen testing. Aiko Miguel reports. Health Department spokesperson Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere explained that they have been collating reports of antigen test results. The DOH said they have long issued a policy and even informed local government units to submit report to the department. Antigen testing was used during the Delta surge for active case finding in areas with high transmission rate. Undersecretary Vergere said some local government units or LGUs submitted their reports but other have not yet complied the health official also gave the breakdown of the antigen test reports they have received from the start of april of 2021 hanggang january 8 ang atin pong total submissions pa lang ng gumagamit ng antigen ay 1,168,000 and 801 out of this more than 1 million use of antigen, about 30% were positive. And out of this 117,000, upon further review of our team, only 30% was qualified as really confirmed positive. It also appeared that several of the antigen test results still need to be verified since they were not used properly. This is why the DOH is creating a system where individuals can input their information and their antigen test results. Meron na ho tayong sineset up na sistema kung saan kahit po yung mga nasa bahay maari na pong mag-log in, ipapasok lang ho nila yung gamit nila ng test at kung ano po yung kanilang resulta and this will be anonymized so that we can just get the numbers no of those using antigen test. The DOH reminds the public that antigen test cannot be used as screening for work or when a person is asymptomatic. The health department will issue a guidelines on antigen home testing and the approved home antigen test kits on January 17. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Education suspends classes in the National Capital Region from January 15 to 22 due to COVID-19 surge. DEPED Regional Memorandum No. 017 Series of 2022, signed today, aims to uphold the welfare of students, teachers, and school staff amid the spike of cases. DEPED NCR, however, noted that students should use their mid-year break to complete backlogs and learning outputs. Teachers, meanwhile, are expected to attend their usual activities, including in-service trainings. Classes will resume on January 24 to 29, but only for asynchronous distance learning modalities. The regional department encourages teachers and learners to stay home and avoid contamination of COVID-19 virus. With the increase of COVID-19 cases among children's age, doctors lay out ways on how to care for children with COVID-19. Eileen Sarudo reports. Doctors remind parents and guardians to carefully monitor the condition of children, especially when they are still unvaccinated. Recently, no, we we really saw a lot of pediatric patients. May surge talaga among uh, the this age group. According to Dr. Angel Aviliana, a pediatric pulmonologist, once a child is exhibiting COVID-19-like symptoms, parents should observe if the child is also having difficulty in breathing. Drowsiness, flared nostrils, and pale or bluish lips are signs of a child having difficulty in breathing. So by eyeballing, an easier way to check kung hirap na sa paghinga ang patient is kapag um, napansin ninyo na napakabilis na ng hinga niya more than the usual so for roughly for less than 5 years old pag sumasampa na yan ng more than 50 per minute or for infants more than 60 per minute Dr. Aveliana recommends to immediately seek medical attention to address the situation 
A child exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19 should also be put in isolation and is cared for by a fully vaccinated adult. Telemedicines are also open for any concerns and queries of parents regarding their child's health. To care for the child, eating fresh fruits and vegetables is recommended, as well as avoiding eating preservatives. The patient should also stay hydrated, especially if they are suffering from vomiting or diarrhea. According to general internist Dr. Bong Santiago, drinking warm water will help in preventing further infections. May mga anecdotal reports, and I think, and I believe in that, na yung warm water can really help uh, minimizing the growth ng infection, especially dito po sa throat na banggit nga po ninyo, sapagkat yung warm, yung uh, increase ng temperature ng isang bagay na uh, ginagamit natin, somehow uh, it dissolves or it, it kills, ka nga, no? or it lessens the 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 replication or pagdami po ng mga viruses na ito. Meanwhile, doctors are not encouraging mothers to be physically away from their children, especially if they are in the breastfeeding stage. So we encourage still um, rooming in. So magkasama pa rin sa isang room ang mother and child or the baby, especially if newborn yan. Because very important yung um, yung skin-to-skin -skin contact and very important, kumbaga, the the benefit outweighs the risk. So, breastfeeding and breast milk is still very important, especially for these children. Because most children do not wear face masks, doctors call on parents to have their children stay at home and avoid going in crowded places. The government previously announced that the COVID-19 vaccination for ages 5 to 11 years old will begin in the first week of February. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Transportation will be deploying mystery passengers in public transportation beginning Monday. JP Nunes will tell us why. The no vaccination, no ride policy in the National Capital Region will be implemented on Monday, January 17. The Department of Transportation says they will assure that the new policy which aims to limit unvaccinated individuals will be strictly observed by public transport vehicle drivers. Mystery passengers who are actually enforcers will randomly inspect transport vehicles to apprehend those who will fail to impose the new policy. So, bakit ho sila dapat ma-deploy? Upang masigurado ho natin na kahit wala hong naka-uniforme, na enforcer ay sumusunod po ang ating mga uh, drivers dito sa ating polisiya at dito po natin makikita kung paano po ma-implement itong ating programa on a daily basis without them knowing really that there's an enforcer or there's a government official or government uh, enforcer dito po sa ating uh, public utility vehicles. Regular inspections of transportation agencies will still be present among the major thoroughfare in the national capital region. Those passengers who will come from provincial terminals, seaport and airport en route to Metro Manila will also be required to present their vaccination cards before riding public utility vehicles. However, there are exemptions to the no vaccination, no ride policy such as people who cannot be vaccinated due to a medical condition and those who are scheduled for their vaccination. The DOTR clarifies that there will be no penalty among those passengers to be proven unvaccinated riding on public transport. However, drivers or operators will be the one to face fines. Passengers will only be penalized if they will try to present a fake vaccination card. Penalties and fines will be based upon the independent memorandum circular released by the respective local government units in Metro Manila. Uh, lilawin ho natin yan. Pagka pasahero po, wala, sa department order, wala ho tayong penalty doon kasi hindi ho yung saklaw ng Department of Transportation. Pero pag kayo po ay pasahero at nag-violate po kayo ng uh, ordinansa na kayo lumabas ng bahay nyo o di kaya ay sumakay ng public transportation, yung mga LGU ordinances, meron po penalty siya mga yan. Ang range po niya nasa 500 pesos up to 5,000 pesos. Yung iba naman, ho, may kasamang imprisonment ranging from 5 days to 6 months. 
The Novax No Ride policy will be implemented in areas under alert level 3 restriction or higher. It will be lifted once the alert level was downgraded to 2 or below. DOTR emphasized that the policy aims to avoid the possible shutdown of public transport system, especially in the national capital region, where surges of COVID-19 are recorded and Omicron still a threat. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The uni team of presidential aspirant Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte is supporting the initiative to locally produce molnupiravir, an antiviral drug. Meanwhile, Senator Manny Pacquiao vows to make sure all Filipino students will have access to online learning if he wins the presidency. Nel Maribuhok has the story. Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte initiative of the government and the private sector to produce molnupiravir, a COVID-19 drug. In a statement, the two support this kind of initiative and they intend to expand it so more people can avail the medicine. They used to say that local pharmaceutical industry should also be allowed to increase manufacturing capacity to make COVID-19 treatments widely available. Meanwhile, presidential aspirant Senator Manny Pacquiao vows to push for one student, one gap program. Under the program, every student will have their own devices to use for online classes and will also look into providing free internet connectivity to marginalized communities to use for online learning. Meanwhile, Senator Panfilo Lacson shared in his Twitter post the result of his COVID-19 rapid antigen test. He tested negative and the senator said he is happy to be back to normal. In another post, he enumerated the characteristics of a leader. He said it should be super anti-corruption, anti-incompetence, anti-indolence, anti-dishonesty, anti-entitlements, anti-arrogance, anti-greed, and anti-tardiness. Meanwhile, Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno personally visits the 24-7 booster shot drive through vaccination caravan until wee hours of Friday in Quirino Grandstand. He says that continuous effort must be done to save as many lives as possible and as soon as possible. Tsagain na natin to. Eh, kaysa naman magka-COVID tayo, eh kasi yung infeksyon hindi na po maiiwasan. Tapos may pamilya na na infect other presidential aspirants like Vice President Lenny Robredo has no reported activities. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Commission on Elections, or COMLEC, said it has launched an official platform that will provide free live streaming of e-rallies of national candidates for the 2022 national and local elections. In a news release, the COMLEC said the platform called Campaign SAFE COMLEC e-rally channel will provide e-rally airtime to all bona fide candidates for pre president, vice president, senator, and party list organizations. Each candidate for president and vice president will be granted 10-minute airtime for each of three slots in a night, while Senate candidates will be given three minutes for every five slots a night. Party list groups will be provided with three minutes each for five slots per night, while political parties will have 10 minutes each for three slots. The Paul body said the platform will begin the live streaming by February 8, 2022, when the campaign period for national candidates starts. Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez said the commission will issue the pertinent guidelines on how the candidates and party list organizations can participate in the e-rally channel. 17 policemen are facing murder complaints over the bloody Sunday incident last March 2021. Dante Amento tells us why live. Uh, yes, Dante, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, William. The Justice Department disclosed that after an investigation and case buildup, the National Bureau of Investigation has indicted 17 members of the PNP-CIDG Calabarzon today. 
This is over the death of spouses Ariel and Anna Maris Evangelista during service of warrants in the so-called Bloody Sunday last March 7, 2021 in Asugbu, Batangas. The Justice Department assures that the cases of the other victims are progressing and filing of complaints has been directed. The DOJ added the filing of cases shows the government's commitment to hold erring law enforcers accountable for their actions. It is also an indication that the Philippine National Police internal accountability is working, as well as zero tolerance of impunity in the ranks of the Philippine law enforcement agencies. In a statement, Pamalakaya Pilipina says it is a welcome development for their quest for justice. However, it does not manifest that the rule of law in the country is working. Bayan Secretary General Renato Reyes, on the other hand, stresses the mastermind of the bloody operation should also be exposed. And that's our latest live from Quezon City. Back to you, William. Uh, thank you, uh, Dante Amento, reporting live from Quezon City. The U.S. Supreme Court did not accept the COVID-19 vaccination or testing mandate under President Joe Biden's administration while endorsing a vaccine policy for health care facilities. Ani Mancilia details why live. Yes, Ani, go ahead. Good evening, William. The mandate of U.S. President Joe Biden enforcing large businesses to require its employees to get vaccinated or get tested every week was blocked by the Supreme Court on Thursday. This is due to the concerns of the uh, conservative justices that the policy is improper on the lives and health of Americans. This decision was ruled with six conservative justices blocking the policy and three liberal justices supporting it. The Supreme Court's decision on the OSHA mandate essentially means that in, the pan in this pandemic, it is up to individual employers to determine whether their workplaces will be safe for employees and whether their businesses will be safe for consumers. According to President Biden, he is disappointed with the court's decision as this is a plan to save lives and to address the pandemic as Omicron cases continue to rise. Meanwhile, the vaccination policy for healthcare workers at medical facilities was allowed by the Supreme Court. This policy received a 5 4 vote and would be applicable to over 7 million workers at 76,000 facilities. CMS's requirement for healthcare workers to be vaccinated will save the lives of patients as well as the lives of doctors, nurses, and others uh, who work in healthcare settings. It will cover 17 million healthcare workers at 76,000 medical facilities. The Supreme Court upheld it, and we will uh, enforce that. William? Yes, uh, Annie, since the COVID-19 policy for big businesses won't push through, did President Biden provide a new measure in line with the influx of COVID-19 infections? Yes, William. In line with this, President Biden calls out to the business leaders to take action and join those who already stepped up in making the workplace safe. This will be implementing vaccine requirements to protect workers and customers. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you, Annie Mancilia, reporting live from Singapore. Due to insufficient storage facilities and short shelf life, some nations had to reject additional vaccine supplies from COVAX, the global vaccine distributor co-led by the World Health Organization. Last December 2021, 100 million COVID-19 vaccines have been rejected, according to Atleva Kadili, Director of Supply Division at UN agency UNICEF. UNICEF has not yet revealed the total number of vaccines that were rejected by countries so far. Vaccine supplies have been increasing due to the donations of wealthier countries that have vaccinated majority of their population. Last year, Nigeria had to destroy more than a million expired AstraZeneca vaccines to show transparency to the public and for the citizens to have faith in the government's vaccination program. Chile is currently vaccinating people with weakened immune system. Officials say people of over 55 years old are next to receive their second booster shot. Jane Robles tells us why life. 
Uh, yes, Jane, go ahead. William, Chile is administering the second booster shot due to high cases of COVID infections fueled by the Omicron variant. Chilean President Sebastian Pinera said the current daily infection rate of 4,000 cases could potentially rise to 10,000 or more. He is mandating people with immunosuppression problems to receive their forced jabs and calls the police the people who refuse to get the shot irresponsible. The campaign will be extended in February to all those over the age of 55. Officials say the fourth booster shot includes two more types of vaccine, which are Pfizer and AstraZeneca. Sinovac, which was the first vaccine used when Chile's vaccination program started, is still going to be used for the fourth jab. Elsewhere in South America, officials report a record case counts. However, in Brazil, experts believe the official number of cases might not be accurate and is likely to be worse due to the data blackout and insufficient testing. William? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Jane Robles reporting live. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, temperatures have consistently risen with the recent years in the decade, recording highest of temperatures. Mavian Dog will tell us the details live. Yes, Maeve? Kath, eight of the previous years in the last decade has made their way in the top 10 hottest years ever recorded, according to NASA and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, with 2021 tying with 2018 in the sixth spot. Data shows that 2021's average temperature was reportedly warmer when compared to the average temperatures in the late 19th century, specifically 1.1 degrees Celsius warmer. The constant high temperatures, scientists say, are the effects of climate change. To combat such high temperatures since 2015, the United Nations had intended to keep the rise in temperatures to no more warmer than 1.5 degrees Celsius. However, doing so means to cut down large amounts of carbon emissions. Currently, the countries which emit the largest amounts of greenhouse gases are as follows. China, the United States, and the European Union, with the United States and Russia contributing the highest per capita. Most notably, the United States has been one of the highest contributors to greenhouse gases which pollute the atmosphere. Data from the 18th century up until 2017 shows the U.S. accounts for most greenhouse gases ever. Kath? Thank you, Mavian Dog, reporting live from Australia. And before we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God from the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 27. It says, Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. And those are the reasons behind the news January 14, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Kat Dumaraos. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.